afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your participating to this presentation. My name is Yoshimi Jianagi. I'm an open source software engineer at Entity Labo in Japan. I came from Japan a few days ago, so I have jet lag. <laughs> I'm very happy to speak to you today. I, I'd like to talk about the challenging PIM AV application with PIMDK. The purpose of my presentation is to share know-how gained by rewriting PIM AV applications. This is an overview of my talk. First, my introduction. Second, my research background and motivation. Third, challenge for implementing PIM AV application. And finally, challenges for Challenging for performance evaluation to get valid results. First of all, let me introduce myself. I have worked at Software Innovation Center of NTT Labo for 12 years. NTT is Japanese telecom telecommunity company. NTT Software Innovation Center is undertaking promotion of open innovation centering and the development of open source platform. There are many committers and developers of open source software, such as OpenStack, Swift, and Apache project in NTT level. I worked on system software, which are distributed file systems such as HDFS, and operating system such as Linux scanner. Now I worked on storage applications. Today I talk to today I like to, I like to talk about rewriting open source software using a new storage and a new library. Next I like to talk about our research background and motivation. By system memory such as NVDN and Intel obtained this deposit memory begin to be surprised. PMM has several features. Memory like feature of PMM are low latency and byte adjustable. And storage like feature are large capacity and non volatile We try to rewrite storage applications since PMM features are utilized. I think storage applications are RDBMS such as PostgreSQL, message queue systems such as Apache Kafka, and so on. Let me share my challenges to rewrite the PIM AWA applications and evaluated their performance. Next, I like, I'd like to talk about how to use PIM. We use Python hardware and software. There are three components, which are NVDN, data access for files, and PIM system memory debugging bucket, PMDK. DAXFS and PMDK are already supported on Linux and Windows. My previous speaker have talked about them. I think no them, but I'm going to explain, <laughs> explain DAXFS and PMDK just in case. I think three pattern of IO stack. First, the left figure shows the current I.O. stack. Many applications use file I.O. APIs, such as read and write syscalls. Context switch is needed. Second, the center figure shows DAX FS. DAX file system is a file system which allows application direct access to PIM persistent memory without page cache. 
so it can run faster than before since unnecessary copies are removed. But content switch is needed between user and kernel space. So content switch becomes overhead. Finally, the right figure shows how to access PMEN with DAX access and PMDK. DAX file system also provides memory mapped file feature. DAX access maps the file on PIM directory into the virtual address space of the application. The application can use CPU instructions in order to access the file data without content switch so it can be very, very faster than before. In this way, PMDK provides primitive memory functions such as CPU cache flash and memory barrier to make sure that the data reaches by system memory. So by using PMDK, we don't need to write such function by ourselves. The biggest benefit, benefit of DAX, DAXFS is that it is not necessary to rewrite applications. The memory mapped file and PMDK can improve the performance of IO intensive workloads because it reduces context switch and the overhead of API calls. But PMDK cannot use without change of the application. So I rewrote PG and Kafka, Apache Kafka in order to improve the application performance with PNDK. I think there are three features of PNDK. First, as I said, an application access PIM as PIM memory map to I.O. Second, uh, application developer can self to find great sync file. For detail, I'll show you in the next slide. Finally, CPU instruction suitable for copy data size are selected. For example, when CPU or the server supported SSE2, data is copied with 16 reg byte register are possible. When CPU or the server supported AVX, data is copied with 32 byte register as possible. And if recent CPU is working on the server, data is copied with 64 byte register as possible. Furthermore, CPU instruction move, move LT and S1 store data to memory without CPU cache. The second feature is the PMDK provides some sync APIs. In particular, I talk about PMM sync and PM drain. Both are PMDK APIs. The key difference between PMM sync and PMM drain is what kind of data is flashed. PMM sync goes to msync syscall. The most general sync function for Memory mapped file is msync syscall. By calling msync syscall, the file metadata and write file data is flushed. On the other hand, by calling memory drain, only write file data is flushed. So memory drain is faster than memory. <laughs> sorry, memory drain is faster than PMM sync. We try to rewrite PG and Apache Kafka as storage application in order to be improve IO performance with PMDK. Let me share know how again by rewrite PG. We looked in PG to find out what kind of file was used in it. We chose two points. 
which are checkpoint file and wall files. Checkpoint file was chosen because many writes occur during checkpoint. Wall file was chosen because it was critical for transaction performance. I talk about challenge for implementing PG, but before that, I like to talk about how to rewrite PG. We replace standard I/O as San Francisco with MMAP I/O as PMDK API simply. As I said, we chose two points. There are checkpoint file and wall files. First, I show you how to hack checkpoint file. On pages, the huge table and so forth cons consists of much checkpoint files. The size of checkpoint file is up to one gigabyte, so it's necessary to resize the checkpoint file. PMDK provides API for memory mapped file, and it's difficult to resize memory mapped file without overhead. I think that best practice is to access only fixed size file. So we, ch we change how to access only one gigabyte checkpoint file. Then what this overhead is to remap a file. I'd like to talk about how to resize the memory mapped file. When the memory map file is enlarged, only part of the file can be accessed with PMDK. This range cannot access with PMDK, so remapping the file is needed. The file is remapped so that whole file can be accessed with PMDK. Next, I show you how to implement the site of memory mapped file. Here is how to write a file on DAX enable FS, open syscall, and close syscall occurs. Then the largest data offset becomes file size. So application developer don't need to write if truncated syscall is source code. On the other hand, on DAX SS with PMDK, PM, PMMAP file, PMMAP, PMMAP truncated syscall, PMMAP file, and PMMAP occurs. Three function calls are added to use PMDK. Three function become overhead. Here is how to shrink a file. On DAXFS, on DAXFS, open syscall, if truncated syscall, and closed syscall occurred. On the other hand, on DAXFS with PMDK, PMMAP file, PMMAP map, truncated syscall, PMMAP file, and PMMAP file occurred. Two function calls are added to the use PMDK. Two function become overhead. Then if data is right to out, out of range, segment fault happen. I think when the file is remapped, it necessary to manage this mapped address. Of course, while the file is unmapped, the file cannot access with PMDK. I think the log function are needed and the application performance reduces. In these cases, it would be better to use only DAXFS. So it's difficult to use PMDK and unless size file size is fixed. By using PMDK, a map cross open and the map and the map syscall is called again. Repeating remapping any time degrees performance because remapping file has large overhead. Mapping large file may, or may mapping large file files may make file system full. I think that be, best practice is to use only fixed size file. Next. 
Next, I show you how to hack work files. The size of work file is fixed. This fixed, file, this fixed size file is highly suitable for memory map to I.O. because it is not necessary to either, neither enlarge or shrink them. For initialization of the work file, PostgreSQL creates the work file and fills the file with zero. PG flash the metadata at the end of initialization. The file metadata includes the file of the of file. The I know the I of sorry. This file metadata includes the file size of file, the ignite interact node or I node and so on. On the other hand, synchronous logging is sequential synchronous write. It's necessary to flash only write data. PMDK provides some sync APIs. For example, PMM sync and PM drawing. Which sync? Yes. I just want to mention that drain doesn't really flash. So drain is a, it's like a fence. Drain will just wait for the issue flash to finish. But actually, you need to call uh, flash instructions explicitly before calling drain. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um. But, yeah. <laughs> you, you ask, uh, you ask. In drawing, it's not worked. It works, but it, it's not a flash. It's, it's just a memory barrier. Ah, uh, yes, I, I know, but. Because you are using. Yes, but PIM drawing manual right, is right, it's PIM, PIM, not, PIM, PIM copy, not drawing, drawing and PIM drawing, drawing is use it. So I, I know PIM, PIM drawing don't work, but I think Manual write so um, manual <laughs> write beam beam no drawing copy and beam drawing is called so I think called this function is called yeah sorry. For initialize of the work file, PG creates the work file and file fills the file with zero. PostgreSQL file, flash file, metadata, and the end of initialization. This file metadata includes the size of file, the internet node or I node, and so on. On the other hand, synchronous logging is sequential synchronous write is necessary to flash only write data. PMDK provides some sync APIs, for example, PM sync and PIM drawing. Which sync function is better for initialization of the work file? And which sync function is better for synchronous logging? It would be better to use PM sync for initialization of the work file because the work metadata <coughs> because the file metadata should be fresh. On the other hand, Neither fine for synchronous logging, but PM drain is fast than PMM sync. So we selected PM drain for synchronous logging. Next, I like to talk about comparing the performance between PMM sync and PM drain. I run, I run micro benchmark to compare the performance between PMM sync and PM drain. This is Emulate the work file I inside PG. I mean, sure, only synchronous logging. This is the detail of micro benchmark. I replace write Cisco with the PMDK API as PMM copy not drawing. 
and I replace F data sync Cisco with the PNDK pair, which is PMM sync or PM not rain. This is the evaluation setup. I use one HPE computer server with two NUM nodes. I run the micro benchmark on node one because there are PIM on node one. The total size of the right data is 10 gigabytes and the block size is 8 gigabytes. The micro benchmark I also put on DAX S is 4 to 3 gigabytes per sec. The throughput with PNM sync is 0 to 0, 0 to 3 gigabytes per sec. And the throughput with PM drain is 15 gigabytes per sec. PM drain is faster or slower than as is expected. PM drain greatly improved performance of IO intensive workload, but you should use PM drain with caution. With caution. PM drain can't flash file metadata, so PM and sync should be called by applications that use, uses file metadata, such as time of that modification, time of rust access, and so on. In addition, PM drain does work without PM copy no drain. Now I like to move on to the next topic which is challenges for performance evaluation to get by result. It's difficult to get by result in pitch performance evaluation. The results such as application performance depend on NUMA, NUMA and CPUs. In order to get by result, it is better to avoid NUMA effect and CPUs becoming spot spot. It's necessary to tuning an application for PMM. I like to talk about how to evaluate the performance to get the right result. Now I like to talk about the NUMA effect. Would you please look at this? This figure, which is our evaluation setup for CPU on node one, access to local memory on node one is fast while remote node zero is slow. This also applies to PCIe SSE, but persistent memory is more sensitive. I run the micro benchmark on local NUMA node one, and I also did on the remote node zero. Node zero. This benchmark is the same as before. The IO throughput on the local node is 15 gigabytes per sec, and one on the, on the remote node is 11 gigabytes per sec. Synchronous write is about 1.5 times faster on local NUMA node than on remote NUMA node. Finally, I, I'd like to talk about tuning an application persistent memory. It's important to avoid calculation processing become hotspot. For example, it's SQL processing in PostgreSQL. Stored procedure improves the PG performance since user-defined functions are pre-compiled and stored in the PG server. For that purpose, we use PG bench command with prepare option, which is this command line. This command line. I run, I run PG bench client with the prepare option, and I also did without the prepare option. I compare them. This PG bench is a popular PG benchmarking tool used use it by many developers to do quick performance tests. I run this PG server on node one and I run the client on node zero. I wrote patches for PIM aware post PG. It's available on PG SQL hackers mailing list. 
The improvement rate using female is improved by 20% compared with using SSD. On Intel Optane SSD, in original PG, hmm? on Intel Optane SSD, in original PostgreSQL, PG Bench result with stored procedure is 18,393 TPS, and one without Stored procedure is 29,125 TPS. The result with stored procedure is 1.58 times faster than without stored procedure. On persistent memory in PIM over PG, the PG bench result with stored procedure is 21,460 TPS and one Without stored procedure is six procedure. Ah, sorry, with stored procedure is thirty six thousand four hundred forty nine TPS. The result with stored procedure is one dot seven times faster than without stored procedure. Improvement ratio using PMA is higher than using Intel Optane SSD as expected. I'd like to give you a quick summary of what I've seen today. The topics that we are converted today were hard to implementing a PMA API application, that how to evaluate it to get part result by applying PMDK into PostgreSQL, I understood it would be difficult to implement PIM over applications and to get part result in performance evaluation. I hope that my presentation answered your question. Thank you so much for your kind, kind attention.